Well, hey, Gideon's Tactical family. Thanks for joining me today on another video out here in the woods, hanging out with a little Swiss Army knife. I don't know why. I just haven't done a bunch of them. We've done a few over the years, but I want to do more of them for you. You guys request uh, them a lot, and there's just a lot of value and performance that you get out of Swiss Army knives, Victoria Knox, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and today we're going to be taking a look at this little guy I just kind of bought on a whim. I saw it at a discount uh, at a local sporting goods store and I decided to pick it up and it's the Evo Grip 18. Now this model has a couple different designs that are available, uh, a couple different tools. They always seem to have like a couple different versions of it. The model that we're going to be looking at today comes with several different tools. Most notably we have a plain edge blade, we have a wood saw, scissors, we have a file and just kind of like a nail cleaner, I guess. I don't know. You know, your standard can opener, bottle opener, flathead screwdrivers, and all, and a Phillips on the backside. So uh, it's a lot for a compact package. And that's really why I was looking at it, why I decided to pick it up, is an item to throw in either mini survival kits or, or in my little EDC pouch that will give me a couple more tools than, say, something like the Tinker would offer to me or the Cadet, um, but still keeping the footprint really slim down and small and lightweight. So let's have some fun today, see what this thing can do, work with it, run in some competitive options that I have in the Swiss Army arena, uh, and just see what the Grip Evo Grip 18 has going on, and if it's something that maybe you want to throw either just on your keychain for everyday carry or something that you want to take the next time you go out hiking, backpacking, or camping. All right, guys, so the first thing is size that really made me gravitate to it is that it's so compact, but I'm getting so much, and you would be getting so much out of the tool. It only weighs 3.3 ounces, and we're going to see it's really stuffed full, uh, and it's only a 3.3 inches long, which is pretty compact for the amount of stuff, and you can see here it just barely fits my hand, but because of how full it is, it, I feel like I have good control over it with, with each of the tools that we're going to look at today. Now, right out of the gate, um, the blade, you know, standard Victorinox style, sheep's foot almost, um, maybe spear point, I guess we'll say, full flat grind. Um, you know, dulls pretty quick, but stainless steel, and it'll, you know, be very easy to resharpen. Now, something that I kind of is interesting and uh, now that we're full-time RVing, I don't have my Tinker with me, so I might be rolling in a few uh, shots. But the Tinker is very similar in size, um, but even slimmer. Now, a lot of Swiss Army knives come with two different blades, the larger one and then an exact same, you know, style, just smaller one. I've never really used those smaller ones ever. I don't really see the need for it. Uh, now, in replacing that, they have they so this one only comes with one plain edge blade but they, instead they put this kind of like file and like a nail cleaner or something. I mean, that's all that's really good for. I feel like this is kind of wasted space. They could have done something different or even lightened it up a little bit, slimmed it down just a hair, I don't know, um, come up with some other tool for us uh, in the design. So I feel like it's fine that it only has one plain edge, but this is kind of a, a waste of space. I don't really use it for anything. Now, what a lot of you guys look for, and what I find the older I get, the more and more I look for this, I used to be like, oh, I'll just use my knife to cut everything. Uh, this has an amazing pair of scissors. So um, you're not going to find that with all Victorinox. You're not going to find that with all uh, multi-tools. And this one is a very large, good recoil on that tension bar and pretty large teeth as well, or, you know, cutting portion. So that's a very nice added bonus. Now, as an outdoor tool, um, this is something that also I'm learning more and more as I just use stuff, you know, the more you use stuff, the more you hone your skills, you find what works, what doesn't, is that the wood saw is very functional as a little notcher, right? Uh, and most multi-tool saws, that's what it's designed for. It's not for delimbing, it's not for cutting down a bunch of branches or anything like that. That's very silly and it just doesn't have the size. It's for making small, either finishing moves, um, kind of like a fatality in Mortal Kombat, um, if you are a woods worker and you, you know, don't have a little tiny like finishing saw around you for whatever happen chance, but if you're an outdoorsman, more like me, hiking, backpacking, camping, doing all that stuff, um, it's great for making little notches if you're going to be building stuff, triggers, traps, um, different types of bushcraft, bushcraft aspects. Um, it's good. If that's not something you're really into and you're just like a through hiker or a day hiker, backpacker, it's fine to have. You're probably never going to need it or use it. 
you're not carrying like a, a, a tripwire and snare you know rabbits as a backup if you run out of dehydrated meals on your backpacking trip like what we recently did um i'd had no need for a wood saw and because i have some skills i could probably use it if i needed to to catch like the squirrels that are around in our camping area on our recent backpacking trip but that would be a very 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 last resort um, and I could probably notch out without much difficulty with a knife. So just something to kind of consider, do you really need a wood saw? It's very nice to have. I'm not saying, it, I'm not dissing it in any way, but uh, yeah. Um, so as we go on, I'll just open this back up because I wanted to touch on this. I like the Evo um, and models like it that have this kind of rubberized traction points. It's very cool. It gives you a little bit more grip. Um, and tactile feel than just the slick polymer of most of the other models. So that's a very good feature to have. And again, I have just enough control over the tool. You got your little key um, attachment for a lanyard. I like to put like a night eyes gear tie on there a lot and that kind of makes it a little grippier and I can lash it to different things if need be, slip joint, obviously. Uh, and then as we move along, I'll just breeze through these, you know, your can opener, bottle opener, flat heads. Um, those are all, you know, functional. They do what they're supposed to do. There's nothing to write home about with those. And then as we move to the backside, I have used this all several times to punch some holes in different material. It's great for like, you know, punching a hole in a belt if you need to resize your belt or something like that. Uh, and then it does have the 3D Phillips head, which is fine. I just, I've never really liked the corkscrew screw aspect. I guess I'd rather have it over a corkscrew, obviously, but um, I don't know. I've, I've it's very short, you know, unless the Phillips is, you know, not recessed into anything, uh, it doesn't really help in any way. Um, and you can't really get into tight spots because of how clunky and, you know, odd it is. I would actually have preferred to have that where the nail file was. Then I could actually use it more, um, uh, more it would be more useful, you know, because I could get it in a narrower spots and do what I need to do. In this format, it's, I guess it, it's decent, but again, I, I would have rather had it in a different location and that's just the way swiss army tends to do their stuff then you do have tweezers which is nice you know you're not going to get on a leatherman or something like that and then you got your toothpick obviously so those are the aspects to the tool i just want to run in some perspective as we hit pricing so guys when it comes to pricing you're usually going to look at about just under 40 dollars, 37 to 40 bucks on average for this model as well as its sibling which i think just has a corkscrew instead um, is usually what you're going to pay. Uh, I got it on sale again, like 30 bucks or something like that. That's why I picked it up, but you know, pushing $40 for the model, which is competitive to what I'm about to run in here, just to give you some food for thought. Now, if you don't feel like you need scissors and a wood saw, the tinker is a great option. It's like 22 bucks. So, you know, th there is some of that, but you know, you're going to have the slicker handles and it's basically just got like the basic Phillip head, you know, can opener and, you know, blade. Uh, whereas if you're looking for a larger woods tool, this is the ranger series i believe this is the 58 or 57 i can't remember but you can see a much larger model but it still has that tactile textile i don't know grip which is really cool huge handle much much heavier locking blade which is pretty cool one-handed deployment really like that but this one is pushing you know the ability with its wood saw to even be a small delimmer just to kind of give you a sizing perspective there you know much much larger so you could start getting through you know maybe two to three inch branches um at that point with uh, the larger model and then it's going to have a hooked um this one is the game cleaning like hunting one um so it's like a safety blade it's got a dulled tip right there but then a recurve pretty cool setup than all your other basic you know tools that you would expect all and uh, Phillips, just like the other one, but this one's gonna be about $57. So you're looking at like $20 more, but you're gonna get huge amount of work with that one. Whereas this one's more of like backup tool, um, or when you don't really use a multi-tool bunch, but you feel like there's a necessity to it, particularly in the outdoors. And then just for some perspective here, the Leatherman Bond um, is a USA made version, slip joint as well, which is kind of cool. We recently did a video on this. You can go check all the details if you want. Um, pretty sweet design, but you will be getting pliers, uh, whereas obviously the Victorinox does not have that. So that's a, a big selling point. Uh, it's going to be almost double the weight at right around six ounces. So that's something to consider, but you get a, a lot of the same kind of idea, you know, with flat heads and you get an all, but you get the 3d 
driver, you know, can opener, all that. You do get the 3D driver though in a position, again, that's much more functional than the corkscrew kind of cockeyed way of the Victoria Knox. So there is a lot of um, value in that perspective. And if you're gonna EDC this every day, um, as long as the availability is there, cause this is slip joint, this is slip joint now fully, even the knife. Um, I would actually EDC the Bond way more than I would EDC a Victorinox. Um, in the back country, because of how, how much smaller and lighter the Victorinox is, um, it, it's a very good competitor unless you feel like you need pliers. So uh, something to just kind of consider there, giving you some food for thought. But the uh, Leatherman will be, you know, like $12 more unless you go over to LA Police Gear, use our 12% off code, uh, and you can get it for about 5 to maybe $8 more than the Victorinox. So something just to check out. Uh, links links for all this stuff um, below. And compared to the, again, for this, just because it's kind of, just because it is thicker, um, if you were to ask me for everyday carry around town, going to the office, hanging out around the house, I'm definitely gonna go with the Tinker over this model. This is much more for the outdoor user in my opinion. Well, there you have it folks. Thanks so much for joining me today. It's been fun and entertaining for me just creating this video, playing with this little tool, seeing its capabilities. And for such a small little compact, you know, multi-tool, it can get a lot of stuff done for us and really packs a lot of punch into its tiny footprint. Now, obviously compared to some of the bigger, you you know, models that we've looked at today there are a few dropbacks mostly just in size over anything else um, so obviously that'll be something that you have to determine do you need compact package with a lot of tools stuffed in i think this might be right up your alley if you need something that's just cheaper and or larger that can do more work for you and get bigger tasks done, then obviously some of the models we've shown you today would probably be the better option. So just appreciate you guys so much for coming over today. I look forward to hearing your thoughts and what you think of this tool and tools like it. I always love reading those comments below. Uh, suggest other multi-tools from not only Swiss Army, but other brands maybe that you'd like to see me test and review here on the channel. Uh, check out the other video popping up. I invite you to subscribe if you're not yet a subscriber. Uh, and throwing up content like this all the time. You can check us out on social media um, so you can see behind the scenes stuff and projects I'm working on. Until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared. We'll see you out there.